Hello, welcome to my channel Dalma Makes. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I transformed a simple maple syrup bottle into this fairy mushroom house. This maple syrup bottle was literally rescued from the recycling bin. And to get started, I'm going to scrape off the label. Of course, you could soak it off in warm soapy water, but I didn't have the patience for it on that day, so I just scraped it off with my sharp knife. And to completely remove any of the sticky residue, I just used a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a tissue. To create the structure of the mushroom house, I'm going to use some cardstock. Uh, this one happens to be an Amazon packaging material. The main big hat of the mushroom I'm going to attach to the cap of the bottle. And I just made a cone out of the cardstock by cutting out a circle, cutting a slit into it and gluing it strategically together. Now for my structure, I'm mostly going to be using hot glue because it dries fast and it catches quickly and I was having an impatient day. But of course, uh, PVA glue or super glue or a number of other adhesives could work. I am using these uh, strips of cardstock that I cut out before to reinforce the structure and I also want to hide that it's uh, like the ribbed cap of the bottle. I'm just trying to make it into a unified shape. I also added a strip to the base and I'm also creating other structures, first of all to hide the tiny little handle and second of all to have just another shelf mushroom type looking thing. And again bulking out with some tissue paper and reinforcing with more strips and in the end I this is the basic structure that I have. Now of course this looks pretty rough and I'm going to bulk it out with air dry clay. I'm just simply adding pieces of air dry clay and I'm starting on the underside of the big mushroom cap. Uh, basically just covering uh, the area that's gonna be the front of the mushroom. I'm dipping my finger into some water to help me smooth out the clay. And to make that really cool uh, front texture, I'm just going to use my pokey tool while the clay is still fresh and malleable and just drag it along and make lots and lots and lots of little lines until I'm happy with the way it looks. I'm gonna set the cap to the side and leave it to dry. And I'm going to tackle the body of the mushroom house. In a similar way I just covered it in air dry clay and cut out holes for the windows. Also making little round shapes to add a sort of stones or bricks in the wall of the structure. And I'm sort of going from top to bottom uh, just to avoid squishing things. Uh, I carved out the door in a very similar method just with my pokey tool and making snakes of clay to add shapes and make more windows and add more bricks. Uh, this part of the project is not very exciting visually um, but I enjoy sculpting the details in like the front steps as you can see. A 
when I'm done with the body of the house, I'm going to go back to the cap of the mushroom and apply another thin layer of clay, just smooshing it right on with my finger and a little bit of water. Um, just because I want uh, the overall texture to be clay. And I really didn't mind that it was a little bit lumpy. Now I decided to make the main mushroom cap on um, Amanita muscaria which is the very typical red cap mushroom with the white bits and instead of making very perfect round things I'm gonna make them lumpy and of different shapes and sizes just to be slightly more realistic and this is what the underside looks like uh, as it's drying and this is what the whole thing looks like once the structure is sculpted after about drying for a day it is time for painting i kept the screw cap still functional um, i'm going to be using acrylic paints to paint everything i'm just going to base coat everything in a brownish beige uh, to start with just covering everything so I have a first layer of paint I'm gonna skip the base coat on the cap though and going straight in with red and I think I did about three coats of this red I'm mixing my own colors and doing variations on the different mushroom caps. Um, I didn't want them to all look the same. I wanted the illusion that they're actually different species of mushrooms. I'm painting the underside of the big mushroom cap where the fronds are a much lighter beige color. But having painted it darker uh, means that all of the recesses are going to peek through. On the house part I'm picking out some of the bricks or stones and I'm painting them randomly in different colors. I think that adds a little bit of whimsy to it. Now I'm skipping back and forth um, because acrylic paints dry fast but I'm working sometimes on the cap, sometimes on the body. Um, just to save time and I was like in the groove when I was doing this so of course I painted those stereotypical white patches on the red cap uh, dry brushing with some straight white for some highlights and eventually painting more of those little bricks as I said I'm probably just switching between what I'm doing give, giving the acrylic paints a chance to dry uh, of course, I wasn't too careful with my windows when I was painting the base coat because I knew I was going to be able to scrape off the paint really easily from the glass. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to be adding some weathering um, because I just really like the feeling of something that's been lived in something organic something that's been there for a while and i'm also painting a few highlights on like the things that the light would hit um, from the top that's pretty much done with the paint job and at this stage it looks like that but i really want to make sure i seal this in so I'm using some shellac ink with some brown acrylic paint mixed in and I'm flooding those fronds. This has a dual purpose of um, more weathering and shading uh, and also sealing in those acrylic paints. I think it's just a very satisfying process and I'll do the same on the main body of the mushroom house except I'm using yellow instead of a brown wash on this I just brought everything to be 
on a much warmer tone, which I enjoy. And then I left the shellac ink to dry for like half a day, I believe. At this stage, I'm pretty happy with it, but from the beginning I knew I wanted to add greenery or moss or like climbing vines to the little mushroom house, just to make it more organic and very naturey. So I'm going to be using some miniature foliage and some PVA glue um, and I'm picking out bits uh, that seem aesthetically pleasing to me. Uh, just tucking them in between those bricks in the wall anywhere I please. And to secure all of that foliage to make sure that it doesn't shed or come off, I'm going to make a mixture of PVA glue and just some water. And I'm going to completely saturate all of the greenery with it. This will ensure that nothing will come unstuck and the, the greenery won't like shed just by handling the objects, leaving little bits all over the room. Of course, this will require like another day of drying. But in the end, I come away with quite a sturdy piece. And that's what it looks like. The little fairy mushroom house after it's completely dried, painted and greenerified. It's not the most utilitarian object, but I suppose you could put some fairy lights inside the bottle or maybe even fill it with some kind of uh, glow-in-the-dark liquid. Um, I think I'll keep mine empty for now and just keep it as a display piece. I really enjoy making the core out of upcycled materials so I thought I'd share this idea of uh, using an empty maple syrup bottle. Let me know your thoughts on this project, I would love to hear about them in the comments below and also thank you for watching and I hope you're having a nice day. Bye!